All right. <clears throat> Welcome to Developer Diaries number 24. And today we're going to go over a new widget that's in Valen 6.1 that was just recently released, which is the tree grid. Um, some housekeeping things. Valen 6.1 is now released. Um, <clears throat> one good thing about it for existing customers that are at 6.0, they can easily upgrade to 6.1. Um, just like you were applying patches for 6.0. So you don't have to, it's not creating a new uh, patching instance or library, et cetera. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Sean. Yeah, I mean, but, basically now there, there's there's no, you don't need to do a migration, um, which was, <clears throat> you know, we understand can be time consuming. Um, so yeah, going forward for all of 6, like when we get to 6.2, it'll be the same way. It'll be a you know, just an update. Um, you know, when we move to seven, you know, then it would likely be a new um, install and you'd have to do a migration. But as, as long as we have the major release of six, those will just be updates. Right. All right. <clears throat> Let's quickly log in. And I'm going to go into App Builder since our topic is um, the tree grid. <clears throat> Now for this session, we've already created, or we have three data sources out there. Um, on, there's a, a chat, oh, somebody can look at that real quick. Uh, yeah, I'll answer that. Okay. <clears throat> so we have three data sources existing, so I didn't want to walk through that, but we'll open them up just so you know. They're using files that are included in Valence. So the first one is, and if you're familiar with Valence, you already know about demo CMS. Um, so this is customer master. <clears throat> And we have our order header, which is demo ord under, underscore h. And then our order lines, which is demo ord underscore d. So we're going to use these three data sources in the new tree grid um, and walk through that together. So we're going to start with our, <clears throat> we call our first level. Okay. So what, what's the first row of that tree grid are you going to want to uh, see data off of? We're going to say our customer master. So you can just say create widget, and then we'll say grids, and we'll go to tree. And here, <clears throat> um, you're going to see all the columns that are available, just like the other grid, grid widgets. Um, I guess we'll just start selecting a few of them to see what it does. So I'll take a customer number, and uh, I'll just take name. And of course, you can do everything like you used to, changing it. You go to configure, <clears throat> it's not going to look much different than a regular grid that we that you're used to if you're already using balance. Here we're going to add a new level, which is you're thinking about a tree, <clears throat> right? It's multiple rows, but there's rows underneath other rows to show that relation. So add level. Now I'm going to find a data source that I want to use, customer order header. And here we're doing the relationship, which if you're familiar with valence, it's kind of the same thing as uh, what behavior filters, right, Rich Sean? Yeah, yep, same thing. So now we're just matching, um, you know, how, what's the relationship between level one and level two? And in our case, it's customer number to customer number. So now level two. This thing. Oh. All right, sorry, this is the video thing. Okay. So you'll see as he as he, after he added that relationship, now those tabs, there's the already existing level one. Um, Johnny just created the level two. So from level two, you know, you have your own column selection just as you did as level one. So let's say we want to see order number and status. And <clears throat> Sean, like say it wrong, but I mean, all this stuff is the same as the grid, alignment, formatting, colors. Um, however, should we talk about alias just right now or should we just continue? Uh, maybe I'd, I'd, I'd show what, what it looks like now. Okay. And then, yeah. So now we see this drop down. we have name and our order number and our status. So, so notice, notice there are three columns. 
you know, name, order number, and status. Name came from level one. Order number and status came from level two. Um, so that's why, you know, you don't you don't see any values in order number and status until you expand the value. You know, and looking at this right now, I might go, oh, you know, it it, it I don't like how it looks because you know, name. Sure, we could adjust the widths and everything, but name is one column and order number is a separate column. It'd be nice if I can combine name and order into one column. So order number will just show directly beneath it, basically, when, when I expand. And that's what Johnny will show you. All right, so we'll go back to level one and name and we'll create an alias. Uh, column one. So as of right now, if, if we were to if we were to look at it now, nothing's changed. All, all, all Johnny did with did there is saying, all right, the name column, I'm going to give it a another name. I'm going to call it Col one. And, you know, no difference. But now we have the ability to say, all right, well, let me share that alias. So if we give the same alias name to another column, such as order number, then they'll share that column together. All right, so let's do that. So <clears throat> if you remember, we called it COW1. So level two, we want to share that with order numbers. So we're going to call it COW1. And notice as soon as he put COW1, it recognized that that label and everything is already defined at level one. So notice the width, flex, sortable, hidden, all the way on the right. You can no longer do anything with that because all those configurations will come from level one. If we look back at level one, we'll see that you know you still have the ability to adjust that. So the 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 you know the parent alias will always be the one where you do your configurations if you're sharing columns. Right. So let's go back. Now notice that order number column is gone. Right. It's sub there. So you probably would say like I'd want to change this label to be something like that. Nice. Um, <clears throat> Hello, one question. Uh, just one question. Mm -hmm. uh, can we can we give that allies to one more column in level two? Mm. So oh no, no. You, no, you can only have, yeah, you can only have an alias. Yeah, like Johnny, if you put cow one on that a on status now. I think it should stop. No, well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe we have a bug. I don't know. Yeah, you should. I, I how, how, how will it? How will it show if you can just show us? How will it yeah, look? It if you just put the call one to status as well. It it, it this allowing it is not. It is, well, it should, yeah, we 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 think we think basically that's a that's bug. A bug. <laughs> that, that that something should not happen. Okay. One alias can be shared amongst many levels, but. An alias can only be shared at one, like once at each level. Okay. If you wanted to have multiple things, you know, I mean, like you could still have that renderer. You know, you could do custom formatting. You could pull data from your record and 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 change what the user sees, right? Okay. So um, let's just add level the the third level. Uh, anytime, any anytime you do add level, it's always going to look at the previous level. So in this case, level two, and you're gonna, you know, so your level three is gonna match to level two. Obviously, you know, your level three doesn't come from, doesn't match with level one. So it's always gonna be from that previous level. That's a good point. So let's so get our lines. I believe that's just order number to order number for this table. And again, you know, you can still do all the things that you're used to, like this is a total, so you can do money, and all that work just like you're used to from the other grids. So when we expand the customer, we're seeing all the orders for that customer. When we expand the order, we're seeing the, the, the line numbers against that order. 
Correct. Um, how can we, we give through... one, one to level three? Excuse me. Uh, can now we give call one to level three? The allies. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Is there any questions so far? Okay. All right. Um, I don't know, Sean, what do you think? We go through some of the, the configuration here because there's sure. some that are different. Let me just, if you go back to the columns tab, I just want to point out sure. one other thing. Um, if you, you know, so if you want to make changes to your, um, you know, your, your mappings at the bottom right there, there's that edit level button. Good point. Okay. And then obviously, obviously remove level. If, if Johnny went to level two, we wouldn't see the remove level because you can only remove the last level. Okay. If you wanted to remove level two, you'd have to remove level three, then remove level two. Right. Uh, yeah, I think that's, you know, I think so, if you, if, so let me ask you this. Um, so each level you invoke a, a data source. Correct. Yeah. So if, if let's say the application was to expand a bill of materials of, of parts, these parts contain these parts, then hello, did I lose Sean? Maybe a lot. There he is. Johnny, did you lose audio there? Yeah, I lost audio. Oh, okay. Anybody else? Uh, no. I, oh, okay. So, so Bob was asking, um, yeah, can basically can we reuse the same data source again? And that's a that's a good question. <laughs> um, uh, I don't. <laughs> I, we could try it. I, don't, I don't know if you heard my use case. My use case was a, uh, ex a bill of materials explosion. You know the SKUs yeah. containing mm -hmm. other SKUs containing other SKUs. I might just have a a single uh, data source to go one level down. Right. right. I I mean honestly I, I haven't tried that. I don't know if, I don't think Sean maybe has either, but I, I haven't. But that's a great use case though. Yeah, um, I don't. I can't think of a reason why we wouldn't be able to do that since each level. Yeah, right. I mean. Um, we could try that, you know, offline or right, something. Let's, okay. Or, or you want to do it now? I mean, I, I well, let's just know. see if you go to level three and add add the uh, customer master back. I mean, I know it doesn't make sense, but can you add your level one to level three now without anything breaking? You mean remove level three and then re no, no, level? like just add level. Oh, because there is no custom no on it. Yeah, so remove level three and add level, the same level that you had for one. So customer master. There you go. Oh, uh, see, cause it's the same name. It's showing at level one. Yep. See that out. So you'd want to alias alias it. it. Yeah, you need to alias. Right. If I just went into level three and then put an alias. Yeah. So yes, you could do that. Can I also have one remark on that, on the question of the uh, SKUs and the bill of material? I guess in bill of materials, not sure how many levels deep you, got, you, you can go. Some products have one sub-level, others can have multiple sub-levels. That's true, what, yeah. What do you have to do then? You have to define, you have to go to the lowest level possible, define as much level as you think you need, or, or how should you yeah. configure that? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I think it's, you know, I think it's something we'd probably need to 
try and uh you know i don't know it might be a, you know there might be some changes needed for, for something like right. that but yeah because right. that's totally dynamic one could be yeah. two levels deep it could be 20 levels deep if you right. do know the max you could define the max right and it right. will then when they're drilling down it, it won't find those so it won't uh, Okay, needs to be tried out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did I change it in here? Yes, all that. Sorry, I screwed you up there. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Um, any other questions before we proceed? Any like total? Oh, I see. There, you do have a summary button. Does that work the way we would expect? I was going to ask about totaling and subtotaling, or is that like within a level, or like you couldn't you couldn't produce produce a. a a total at level one of the sum of what's at level two or anything like that, right? Mm. You know, I, I almost forget how it works. I mean, I think we'd have to just <laughs> try it. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. okay so I'll notice, notice we don't allow summary summaries right at right any other level but the first level. Hmm. Okay. So there's our answer there. All right, uh, configuration, a lot of this is the same. Like, I don't think UI-wise any of this is different. Um, paging, um, search. Search, we should talk about. Um, but let's start with, what do you think, data, Sean? Sure, yeah. So there's, you know, uh, auto load, you know, that's common. Uh, just basically load the data when the widget's created. Um, something unique to the tree is the auto load all levels. So what that means, so right now it's not selected. So as Johnny expands any of those, it's going out and making a call right now. It's making the call for that individual, you know, customer or order of 1004 or 1005 as he clicks it. Um, auto load all levels will pull all of the data for this entire tree grid um, you know, as, as, at startup. So if we, if you check that, um, you know, we put out a little confirmation message just to say, look, this is a resource intensive process. You know, we wouldn't recommend doing this if it's a large data set, because we're not going to stop you from doing it. But, you know, if, if you're dealing with a, a, a very large data set, um, you know, you can probably bring the, your browser to a halt or it could just take a long time and, take you know, we'll, time. yeah. So, you know, so yeah, sure we say okay. So as soon as as soon as we um, now you'll notice it takes longer to load. So it's loading every level, it's preloading everything. Um, but as after Johnny selected auto load all levels, we see auto expand um, became available as well, and that would be to as you know <laughs> to auto expand every level. So if we check that, that's also going to say it's resource intensive. And I think in app builder, I forget. I don't I think we you know, may not do it in app builder. Yeah, we, if you're if you are an app builder, <clears throat> it will not it won't auto expand, I believe. Um so we'd we'd have to, you know, we'll pop this into an application and, and show you what that does. And the reason we don't do it in in um, app builder is because it's it is resource intensive, and I think we just elect. We're like, you know, we're already doing a lot here and in, in loading everything. Um, right, and when um, you're like, you know, if you're an app builder and let's say you're in the you're in the designer mode of the app, like if you're bringing open that up, you've got to wait for this widget to load. Well, if you've got auto load levels, fine, but then to add the resource of auto expand, it just stinks for you when you're moving widgets around or dealing with an app. Yeah. And, and from a technical standpoint, you might wonder, like, why would auto expand? Yeah, I, I would think auto load all levels would be 
where all the resources take place. Auto expand, it's each time you expand something, it's creating the DOM for that. Like the all the DOM elements for everything beneath all these levels doesn't exist yet until you expand it. So it's creating a bunch of DOM elements at once when you do auto expand. Okay. I might want to turn. We might off. want to turn that off. Right. Yeah. Move on here. Oh, and I can't then search by column if I don't have auto load. So I guess that's a good topic on what, why is that? Maybe it'd be best to remove that third level for now. <laughs> yeah. Just it's. I'll wait for this to finish. <clears throat> so we're just removing the third level. So the auto, auto load all takes, uh, doesn't take so long. So the search by column is only available when you <clears throat> auto load all levels because this is gonna then allow them to filter the data locally, of course. So we need, when you're searching by column, we need all that information up front so then we can filter down this widget. And then this auto show sub levels, I'm trying to think of a scenario we could do to show that, but it's if the user's filtering for let's say office depot we don't want to filter we don't want to filter its children so it's sub level so don't filter those out or you might want to so you'd leave this unchecked um, so if you do if, if you type office depot now yeah, and then if you expand that okay so nothing's in there because beneath office depot um, you know there's no match for office depot but if, if, if you check always show sub levels and now you do Office Depot, we should still see all of the children beneath that initial match. Okay. That's how are you? Um, let's pull this turn it off. <clears throat> Now, is there anything else that we need to I'm trying to think if there's anything else outside of this that's unique to the tree right is the search if you go to the search is there anything there i don't think so no, same thing okay yeah. um if you go back to data now if you activate the search and go back to data i forget is anything different there no no okay <laughs> Um, and then of course, you know, filters the same, there's no difference. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe we save it with the auto expand, put in an app just to see the auto expand. Okay. Auto expand. And then it probably would be interesting too, to, to look at the behaviors for yeah. the tree grid as well. Right. So I noticed there isn't a download section to the configure. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, there's there's no download. Um, to you know, do that kind of nesting for the PDF or Excel spreadsheet is just something that we haven't attempted to tackle because it's uh, kind of a large deal. Okay. So like Sean was saying, behaviors is a little different because of the tree. If we, uh, I guess there is another, before we go into that, if, I think we have different app variables for it too. Yeah, so you have the ability to collapse all or expand all <clears throat> from an app variable to it if you want to do that. 
of course that app variable needs to be set to uh, true, just like you're used to for, I believe we do this in the, this is kind of available too, right, Sean, on like the pivot grid or something, I think. Yeah, yeah, it might be, maybe maybe we create an app variable for those and just put a button just to show that in action. So anytime P collapse is true, it's gonna collapse. Anytime P expand is set to true, it's gonna expand everything. Okay. So notice, notice when he expanded the uh, customer tree, normally like a grid, you'll have one level beneath that, it'll say row click. And in this case, because we have two levels, you know, you may want to do a different action based on the level that was clicked. For example, if I click on, you know, level one, which is the customer number, um, you know, I may want to do something different than if I actually clicked on level two, which is an order number. So for as many levels you'll have, you'll have as many um, click events beneath the tree for that level. So level two click, will it give the data of level one as well? So suppose mm -hmm. uh, I clicked on level two, went to a program and I want to know the, for which level one it has came with the data is. So is it is it possible? I think right now, if, if we do like, uh... I don't know if you, if you click any of them. I think it's only going to show the level two. Damn, there's no other widget to fill. I, I can show that though. Uh, I think we'd have to, or maybe go to set app our type, set, set title or something. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, we wouldn't have that information. It's only based off that level. So if you need to carry on that, um, Key you know, this. and it's, it's something, you know, this is, this is, this is the, this is the first pass at the tree grid. Um, you know, we know as, as, as we get it to, you know, you guys, you know, use cases will come up and, you know, so it's, you know, I don't, we're not, you know, we're not saying this is a finished product at this point, just like right. when we first did the grid, there's been so many changes just to the grid. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, good, good question, Atul. Yeah, that's good. So these are the functional equivalents of a row click. So to to trigger that's the behaviors right. here, it would be a row click. That's yes. right. I mean, you would click the row. Does expanding a level count as a row click for purposes of triggering these behaviors? No. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And also, I guess we should state that you can have icon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Icon columns per level. So if you want, you know, an action on that, and you have multiple things, you can have that same thing, just like on the grid, but it's just based off the level. Yep. Well, let me add that, but those buttons for the expand and collapse. I forget, is it already set to auto expand our, our tree? I forget. I think it is. I think it is. Uh, I guess we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Nice. 
I'm trying to think if there's anything else specific to it. Can't think of anything else. No, I think, yeah. And I think if, if you're familiar with creating a grid, um, you know, this should come pretty easy. The, 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 the real difference is that you need to link the levels, right? And, and e adding each level is the same as, you know, doing a filter widget where you're just mapping um, the relationship between, you know, data source A to data source B. So I'm checking chat. Nope. Any other questions? Okay. Well, if there's no other questions. I think that's 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 what we have for today's session. So, thanks for everybody joining. And of course, this will be uh, this is being recorded, so it'll be up on our our YouTube channel. And um, as always, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can always go to our forums and uh, post in the support area or feature requests. All right. All right thanks, well, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Have right. a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.